A Douglas Fairbanks home movie of 1929. Chaplin plays a Grecian spirit in a German helmet. Even when playing the fool, Chaplin could sometimes create an idea which he would return to years later. Out Caesar, out Nolus, emperor of the world. The Great Dictator, 1940. Chaplin was an all-round entertainer. Long before the talkies, he was writing music and recording it. Here he guest conducts the Abe Lyman Orchestra in 1923. We have combined his record with the film. Even when he relaxed at parties, his mind did not. This 1926 home movie has never been shown before. popular turn, the dance of the rolls from the gold rush. Among the famous titles in the Chaplin vault are other films that never saw the light of day. Films that did not measure up to Chaplin's exacting standards. Films like The Professor, abandoned after one sequence. Films of first war propaganda, visitors to his studio, and how to make movies. 
made partly to celebrate his independence, but mainly for fun. Hollywood was rural when Chaplin bought five acres of lemon, orange, and peach trees. It was not rural for long. To calm local feeling, Chaplin built his studio in disguise. Chaplin's studio employees played themselves. Valet, Tom Harrington. In his film, Chaplin made fun of his role as boss. But visitors wanted only to meet the clown, the entertainer, and he made little films about them as well. Not only with actresses like Maxine Elliott, but with other notables like former Chief of Staff General Wood. The Bishop of Birmingham, also in uniform. Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark wants to see Charles walk. decided to make a film using a set for Sunnyside and co-starring Edna Purviance. Chaplin organizes the royal entourage. Boxing champion Benny Leonard on the set of A Dog's Life with his manager and Charlie's brother Sid.
Out of these vignettes would emerge routines Chaplin used in his films. During World War I, the great music hall comedian Harry Lauder paid a visit to Chaplin. Together they made a film to raise funds for wounded British soldiers. Lauder was already a star when Chaplin was still learning his craft in the English music hall. A scene Chaplin did not use. Chaplin does Lauder, and Lauder does Chaplin. Chaplin discarded this sequence, but he never wasted anything, particularly gags. Ten years later, he returned to the gag for the circus, but added a little extra. Chaplin had a mind like an attic, said an associate. He might discard ideas, but he would never forget them. He staged this sequence for a mutual comedy he never finished. He planned to use the same footage in how to make movies, and never finished that either. The short-sighted golfer is Albert Austin. Three years later, he returned to the same theme and the same location for the idle class. This time, the golfer is John Rand.
This scene from Sunnyside, 1919, was part of a complete sequence, with Albert Austin suffering in the course of comedy. The Russia show it was full of elaborate gags. Chaplin cut the sequence together, but left it out of the final film. In it, Charlie is a handyman in a small town hotel, expected to be everything, even a barber. Chaplin hated barbershops and in real life learned to do the job for himself. Here he plays a man who has clearly never done it before. What he learned from this scene, he would use years later in one of the best known sequences of The Great Dictator. In 1952, in Limelight, Chaplin played an old music hall comedian on Hard Times. Phyllis, Henry! Phyllis, Henry! Stop that! What do you think you're doing? You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, fighting like that. In a dream, he remembers his old act for the flea circus. Hey, up!
Stop that now. Phyllis, Phyllis, come up from there. It was not the first time he'd tried such a scene. Around 1923, he began a film called The Professor. It would probably have been his last for First National. What kind of film did he have in mind? It may always be a mystery. This is the entire sequence as Chaplin cut it. The Professor was also a music hall comic on hard times, forced to sleep in a DOS house. It was one of Chaplin's many attempts to get away from the tramp character.
1918. Troops passed the Chaplin studio on their way to play in a war film. A few days earlier, Chaplin had begun his own war film, Shoulder Arms, destined to become the most popular film of the entire war period. These domestic scenes were cut. The exhibitors wanted a short comedy, not a feature. But this scene also fell victim. Charlie's Medical with Albert Austin. It will be one of many sequences from the famous films which would never reach the public. The circus, begun in 1926, was the most miserable experience in Chaplin's career. His marriage had broken up. The divorce took over his life and the headlines, and he had to stop the picture in mid-production. He shot several sequences he never even cut together. This is one. In the film, Charlie's rival for the girl is the tightrope walker. Charlie determines to learn his skill. Making the film had its own problems. In this case, an unpredictable dog. Charlie is trying to impress the girl, Myrna Kennedy, but things go wrong from the moment they meet the rival, played by Harry Crocker. Chaplin abandons the dog. In the restaurant scene, a special effect. Doc Stone plays a tough prize fighter, as well as his twin brother. 
thanks to double exposure. We have assembled the rushes as we think Chaplin planned the scene. Thank you. 
Charlie Caught in the Machine Age was the theme of modern times. Made in 1936, yet still a silent film. This is the only scene surviving from the outtakes. Chaplin edited it, then cut it out before release.
Chaplin's favorite of all his films was City Lights, even though it had been so difficult to make. Its keynote was simplicity. This is how he planned to open the picture. On his back lot, he created a bustling metropolis. The opening scene was to have been seven minutes of sustained invention built around the simplest of objects.
These rare scenes nearly perished in the flames. Chaplin ordered most of them destroyed. How many other remarkable moments were lost forever, we shall never know. <laughs>